Mercedes-Benz backed Ferasus Energy say that they will deliver 400 watt hour per kilogram first generation sulfide solid state batteries by the end of this year. By the end of this year, we will have, well, the highest energy density batteries we've ever seen in electric cars. 400 watt hours per kilogram. What does that even mean? What kind of range would you get from an EV with say a standard battery today that had 400 watt hours per kilogram. Well, I'm going to talk about that, different models, give you an estimate of what range you're going to get, because this is actually a very real issue, very real question. Frasis, they're not the only brand that say they're going to actually have solid state batteries on the road within the next 12 months. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. If you've gotten this far, if you've watched any of our videos before and the channel provides you with value, please subscribe and like the videos because that helps with the algorithms. And obviously that's Pretty important for spreading the message that EVs are the way forward. It's not hydrogen. It's not synthetic fuels. It's not going back to the good old days of gasoline, but actually EVs are one of the biggest solutions and the world needs them. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Frasis Energy, backed by Mercedes-Benz, disclosed details about its solid state battery at an investor relations meeting held a few days ago. So what did they actually say? Well, the company said it is accelerating research, pilot production and industrialization of sulfide based all solid state batteries. Frasis confirmed its first generation all solid state batteries have advanced beyond laboratory stages and are now entering pilot production and delivery. Construction of a 0.2 gigawatt hour sulfide solid state battery pilot line is underway now with deliveries happening by the end of 2025 to their first customers. I don't know if this is um, wise. I don't know if you want to use first gen product, but anyway, it's happening. These cells combine high nickel ternary cathodes with high silicon anodes. And they're designed to achieve an energy density of 400 to 500 watt hours per kilogram. So the first gen versions of the batteries will be 400 watt hours per kilogram. For us, this is saying that within potentially one to two years, the energy density will increase to 500 watt hours per kilogram. Yeah, so a second generation version featuring lithium metal anodes paired with lithium rich manganese based on high nickel ternary cathodes will hit 500 watt hours per kilogram and will be scheduled for a release in 2026. Apparently, they're also targeting um, launching a third gen battery in 2027 with energy density that's higher than 500 watt hours per kilogram. So, what kind of range would you get from a 500 watt hour per kilogram battery? Well, really? I mean, think about it like this, yeah? Tesla's Tesla Model Y, the current car, has an 82.5 kilowatt hour battery and it gets 600 kilometers of range. The energy density of those batteries, it's about 250 watt hours per kilogram, approximately. Would you double the range? You potentially could double that range with the same size battery, pretty close to it. You'd be looking at close to 1,200 kilometers of range. I mean, that is wild, right? It's not a big battery. But here's the thing. That's, um, mm, I think, not as interesting of a comparison for me as the new BMW iX3. The new iX3 uses proprietary 4695 cylindrical cells that are slightly bigger uh, slightly taller than, than Tesla's own 4680 cylindrical cells. Now that car using a 105 kilowatt hour battery has 800 kilometers of WLTP range. Now, if you were to swap that battery and put it in a, uh, an equivalently sized battery with a 500 watt hour per kilo energy density, you'd be looking at a range of probably around about 1400 kilometers. So yeah, I mean, if you wanted that kind of range, it's doable. Within a couple of years, there will be pickup trucks where people won't be talking about uh, the problems of battery range. I can't tow far enough, can't tow my boat, can't tow my motor home, whatever. 
this problem will be solved with these batteries. Uh, realistically, I mean, you're looking at potentially up to a thousand miles of range within only probably one or two years, which is um, crazy and really quite exciting. Frasa said its semi-solid state batteries are already in commercial use at the gigawatt hour level, which with costs only five to 10% higher than conventional liquid batteries. Now, I don't know if this is true, but Frasis is saying the cost of these batteries is five to 10% higher than conventional liquid batteries. Now, what do they mean by that? Are they referring to lithium ion phosphate batteries that BOD and Cadle sell for $55, for 55 US dollars per kilowatt hour? No, no, absolutely not. They're referring to you know, battery pack prices in the US for ternary batteries from, say, LG Chem. You know, not lithium ion phosphate. We're talking about lithium, you know, probably. NCM, nickel cobalt manganese batteries, which would probably cost about $120 per kilowatt hour. Great price, but remember, the price is actually lower than what I expected, but it's worth pointing out, they will have to compete with sodium ion batteries from Cadle particularly. Their Naxtra sodium ion battery will probably cost around $25 US per kilowatt hour, a fraction of the price. Now, yes, the energy density is entirely different. Those sodium batteries are 175 watt hours per kilogram, much lower than the theoretical 500 of these batteries, and obviously even much lower than the 400 watt hours per kilogram energy density of the first gen version of this battery. So this is how the market will play out, I think, personally. Sodium ion batteries will take up the lower range and even up to the mid range as well. And then you're going to see probably... Really, the top 20% will be sodium, will be solid state batteries within probably five years time. That's what I'm, that's what I'm predicting will happen. There'll be a major market shakeup. And the batteries that will suffer the most, in my opinion, will be ternary lithium batteries. So NCMA batteries, NCM or NMC batteries, and also lithium ion phosphate. Because if sodium ion batteries have the same energy density as lithium ion phosphate, which they do, and work much better in the cold, which they do, and even better in the heat, which they do, and last far longer than any other battery on the face of the earth. In fact, more than twice as long as lithium ion phosphate, and they're half the price, like I said earlier, then there's really no reason for anyone to want lithium ion phosphate, which sounds crazy, doesn't it? But um, that's what will eventually happen. Anyhow, getting back to Phrasis, they reported their SPS batteries and their semi-solid state batteries have secured projects with customers, including Xpeng or Xiaopeng, their Aero HT division. So that means for their drones, their flying cars. GAC as well. Obviously, GAC have the Aeon EV brand. Um, so both of those companies will be using these batteries apparently within the next 12 months. Uh, yeah. Also, what are they using them for? They're using them for their urban air mobility. So they're flying um, drones, flying planes, and humanoid robotics. Now, it's going to take a little while before I think Frasis can make enough of these batteries to really put them in EVs in a, a big way. Frasis also announced that its first generation solid state battery um, is ideal for humanoid robots and samples have been delivered to leading companies in the robotic sector with joint development underway. The cells use a sulfide solid electrolyte, high nickel ternary cathode and high silicon anode with energy density of, as I mentioned before, 400 watt hours per kilogram. Apparently, they have passed the nail penetration test, 250 Celsius thermal chamber test, and shear tests. So they're very, very safe. And without a liquid electrolyte, they're much less flammable than even lithium ion phosphate batteries, which are extremely unlikely in and of themselves to catch fire. According to Frasis, customized development for humanoid robots includes optimizing size and output modes of the batteries to meet requirements for lightweight design, long range, and high safety. So guys, you know what? Mobile phones, battery life, what, what do we just hear? The new Apple 17 Pro Max, which is the most expensive phone pretty much on the market, most expensive phone that Apple make anyway, that gets, I, I believe, 39 hours of battery life, which is the longest battery life an Apple phone has ever gotten, 39 hours. But... Within a few years' time, these high expensive phones will be using solid state batteries, and that 39 hours will look like peanuts. We're going to be looking at like 
80 hours of battery life compared to today's 40 hours. It'll be a massive change. So probably the biggest change you guys are going to see, I think, in a real world level within the next, say, three years will be smaller devices, phones and watches, high-end ones, getting massive, massive, massive improvements in their battery life. Because ultimately what will happen is these manufacturers will be building out batteries, but they won't be able to make huge quantities but they just won't have the production capacity to make huge quantities for EVs. It just won't be there for a few years anyway. So they're going to put them into smaller devices, robotics as well. Uh, as you can see, you know, Xiaopeng or Xpeng's are flying cars or flying flying drones. And obviously, device smaller devices like I've just, just described. That's where we're going to see the benefits initially. And it's probably going to come in a few years' time when we start seeing them mass-produced for electric cars. But it's worth pointing out, Mercedes-Benz are testing these batteries in one of their EVs right now. Uh, several manufacturers, I believe, are actually testing them right now. So this will happen. It is exciting to see. It's exciting to see because still Toyota is saying the future of the automotive industry, they said it yesterday, is hydrogen. Even BMW is saying similar stuff, yeah? Um, I think really by 2035, we'll see solid state batteries mass produced in many different EVs and ultimately there'll be just zero reason to want to buy an internal combustion car. Batteries continue to improve, they continue to come down in price, and they continue to have higher energy density, and they continue to be able to be charged faster as well. Charging speeds keep on growing. What are your thoughts? Thanks for watching.